Howdy, 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 everybody, ladies and gents. I know I haven't made a video in a while. The reason is completely irrelevant and no one cares, so I'm just going to move on. So what we're going to talk about today is the thing that everyone's talking about and I'm doing just to get views and because I actually want to teach people how to do things, but also for the views, uh, React Hooks. So React Hooks are something that are relatively new to React as of a couple months ago. The community is starting to standardize around them. The community is starting to see that they are the second coming of Christ. Uh, they are. They are fantastic. They are perfect. They are everything we wanted and more. So the main two uh, new hooks we are going to talk about are use state and, oh, what is the other one? I'm going to do this without editing, so we'll figure it out. Oh, use effect. So use effect and use state are the two most common hooks that you will run across. Uh, I'll give a very, very simple example of uh, use context. We won't be updating the context, but uh, I'll kind of show an idea of kind of how use context it's, uh, use context works. And we will talk about uh, use dispatch as well, but use dispatch, uh, I'm not going to show any examples for. I'm going to talk about it. So how are we starting? I just did a... Um, Simple create React app, uh, create React app hooks example, and here you can see, so we'll CD into that. I will webstorm, ooh, not webstorm dots. Uh, so we have it open here. Uh, I already had it open, I think. That's why it's so fast. Webstorm is not that fast. I do love webstorm though. So I'll bump the font up just a touch because everyone always complains that my font is too small. We'll do 26. All right. So we're going to do everything in one file, so we don't really need to worry about this at all, actually. So this is all in one file. I'll actually bump the text up a little more since we got rid of that. We'll do 30. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So now we got a big old text blob. What are we going to do? We're going to use the two new hooks. Now, I don't think it's very useful to just show you what hooks do. I'm going to compare and contrast a class-based function or a class-based stateful component with a stateful functional component. So we are going to have two things. So I'm going to rename this app. I'm going to rename it functional component. Yes, I want to rename it refactor so now we have functional component and then we will have function uh, or class class component component extends component now this is something that most of you are going to be used to and I'm actually just going to copy all of this There we go. We're going to get rid of the link. We'll get rid of all this, and we'll have the nice spinny logo because it looks nice and spinny. So we'll also just kind of add an H1, and we'll say that this one's functional, and we'll do the same thing with this one, and we'll say that it is a class component. So we'll kind of double-check, make sure that works right. That was my previous uh, take, which went very poorly. So we will actually yarn start. Uh, as I said, I'm doing this all, doing it live. We are doing it live. So we're going to go here, and you can see we are rendering the functional component. So let's actually start with the class component. And the reason is because I kind of want to give you something that we're all used to. A counter. So let's do a constructor. Let's say props. Super. You guessed it. Props. So we'll say this dot state is equal to counter. Or is equal to object counter zero. We'll have an increment and decrement function. Increment. Decrement. And of course we'll say this dot state. Or this dot set state. Uh, you guessed it, counter, and the counter is going to equal uh, this dot state dot counter plus one, and I'm just going to copy this, and we'll do plus one instead of that. It'll be minus one, and then of course we have to bind these. So 
for this dot increment or the increment dot bind this we'll do the same thing for increment we'll say all right i know i'm going pretty quick but this is a super simple example so we'll obviously do an h5 or something actually we'll just do a p we'll say the counter is currently this dot state dot counter exclamation point just to make everyone happy and we'll do a button we'll say on click is equal to this dot increment and we'll say plus we'll do the same thing but for decrement we'll make that a minus button the counter is currently woo, we're off to the races right your super simple react example What we're going to do is we're going to run our formatter because I forgot some semicolons. And then we are going to recreate this with React hooks. Now, it's a super simple example, but React hooks are super simple. So let's go down to our functional component. Let's render that guy instead. Now, there is a new function in React, and I'm going to collapse this just because it's so big. It is called use state. So use state is new. It is a it is a hook. It returns an array and it takes in an initial state. So obviously for us that was zero. And <clears throat> excuse me. The array will give you two things. It will give you the current value. So we'll call that our counter and the ability to set that value. So we'll say set counter. So what's gonna happen now is we're just gonna kinda do what we did before. We're gonna have a P, we'll say this is the functional counter. And like I said before, counter is the current value. And then we'll say a button on click equals, and then we'll need to make this an arrow function because we want to set the counter and now since we're incrementing in this one, it will be the counter plus one. We'll make that a plus button. And we'll do the same thing, set counter, but you guessed it, minus one for the minus button. So we now have the functional counter is one, two, three, two, one, zero. Now, if you've been writing React for a while, or even if you're new to React and you've been looking at some older documentation and examples, this is, this is weird. This, this is different, right? We're in a function, but we have a state. The reason this is so powerful is that now you no longer need to choose between a class stateful component and a functional non-stateful component. All components, either class-based or functional, have access to state now. Now, it does come with some caveats. State cannot be conditional, meaning that all of the state objects must be at the top, or all of the use state calls must be at the top. So you, you shouldn't be doing like, uh, you know, if something return and then have a, uh, have a use state down here, right? Uh, something set something right you c you shouldn't do this right and the reason is is there's magic obviously that I don't have enough time to explain kind of what they're doing and I honestly don't 100% explain what they're doing but or I don't 100% understand what they're doing but basically what's happening is is that react is binding to the idea that all of your use states will be at the top and they will always be in the same order. So if you have a conditional, you can't create a use state in a conditional. Why? Because if you had another one down here, we'll call this something to and set something to, and we'll say something to, right? These wouldn't always be in the same order, and React would get very confused on which one you're trying to do, and you'll have very awkward side effects because this set something will actually end up being set something to sometimes, and vice versa, and obviously that's just a bundle of mess. So instead of that, you will always want to have all of your use states at the top of your function, 
and they should always be called in the function where you're rendering the component. Now we're going to talk in a little bit about uh, custom hooks, but that's neither here nor there. That's pretty much it. Use state's pretty simple, right? Where you give it a ca you give it an initial value. It gives you the current value, and it gives you the ability to set the value. Using this setter will re-render the component. Now, if I were to say, like, instead of, say, set counter, I were to say counter is equal to counter plus one. We'll make this a let, right? That doesn't do anything. It's, like, it's it's having a oh, minus works, obviously, but... Right, it doesn't re-render the components. You saw I hit plus a bunch and then hit minus, and now it's 10. I hit minus a bunch and then hit plus a couple times, and hit minus again, now it's 11, right? So it's keeping track of the value, but it doesn't actually set the value. So uh, much like a regular state, the actual variable should be a constant to help you and make sure that you are not setting it and you are using your correct setter. Now, that's pretty much it for use state. Again, there are two big things. Always at the top, or three big things. Always at the top, never conditional and never in a different order, and never manipulate the actual value. You should always use the setter. Now that we've done that, let's go back to our class-based component. And let's do something like component did mount, right? I'll say this dot set state counter. Let's make it 201, right? 201, why not? So, and then let's render our class based components. So the calendar is currently 201. Now, we could do that just by setting the initial value to that. That's 200, but that's not what, that's not what's happening, right? What's happening is that the initial state is actually zero and then in the component did mount it's 201 now let's think of a logical explanation of something we would do let's say that our counter starts at zero but we actually want to retrieve from the server what the user has been doing and then we set it to 201 because that's the number that they've uh, ended up on so obviously you don't want to do that in the constructor because that's just wrong that's not how you're supposed to do uh, class-based components it's not how you're supposed to do react so you would do it in the component in mount. Now, currently, we don't really have a way to do that here, right? We we don't, uh, I mean, how do we hook into these lifecycle methods? Uh, the class doesn't extend component, so we don't have these. The, like, if I were to put this in there, it wouldn't do anything because component in mount doesn't exist on the uh, the prototypes. So what do we do? Well, that brings in the new uh, the new hook called use effect. What use effect does is use effect will have dependencies, and use effect will execute its body on a dependency change. So, if we have use effect. We want to set counter. What do we want to set to? 202, just to make sure that we know the difference. Now, we're kind of skipping ahead here, but we're gonna make this an empty array. The empty array is the dependencies that this is dependent upon. If it is an empty array, it means that it will run a single time on mount. Very similar to, ding, 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 you guessed it, component in mount. So we'll close this class-based component for now re-export our functional component. Come back in here and we'll see that the functional counter is 202. And we can actually see that this function is being called. Now, if it re-renders, it is not getting reset back to 202. Because, again, we have no dependencies. If we were to delete all of those dependencies, It'll be very similar to a component did mount or a component did update lifecycle where every re render will set the counter to 202. Up, 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 up. You see, it's trying, but it can't. 
because it's using this effect. It paints, and if you read the documentation, they use the term paint, so that's what I'll use as well. It will paint the 203, which you'll see just so, so, just so briefly. You see that 203, and it comes back to 202. And the reason is because this use effect is being called immediately after that paints. So use effect is very, 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 very powerful, right? So let's have another effect. Let's go back to our, you know, uh, only setting the user to, or the counter to 202, and then we can do our increments and decrements. And now let's say, instead of just having that one, let's have something depend upon counter. Let's have another effect. What's an interesting effect we can have then? And now we want to have it have a dependency. We'll say const. And let's just say, eh, let's say we'll just m add two instead of, we'll add, we'll multiply counter by two every time counter is changing. So we'll say counter two, counter by two, set counter by two is equal to use state. Let's make the initial value uh, zero. And then we will say set counter by two is going to be counter times two. So you guys can guess, I will actually just do a P. This is the counter by two, counter by two slash P. So there you go, you can see our counter by two is called initially and component didn't melt. And then now it is affected by counter. So you can say it goes up 406, down 404, down 402. So you can see here that this is complete or this is completely dependent upon this. Now let's say that we added another state. Let's just say um, fun string, right? Set fun string is equal to use state. We'll make it an empty string. And we'll say, you know, a button on click is equal to uh, function set fun string. And we'll just set the fun string to um, a date, right? We'll, we'll say string, we'll say new date dot Let's get, I don't know, what can we get? We can get the milliseconds, right? We'll get the milliseconds and we'll make it a string. We'll say set silly string. All right. So if I click this button, your expectation is, is that this will not be updated. Right? Set silly string. Well, we're not displaying silly string. We probably want to do that. So we'll say this is a silly string, silly string, or fun string. We're calling it silly. Little did I know he was just fun. All right. So we can set silly string, right? And we can see here that the string is going up. But this is not changing, nor is this changing. Now, let's do something interesting. Instead of making it a fun string, let's actually make it a number, like it was before. Instead of calling it fun string, we'll rename it to fun milli. And instead of set fun string, we'll say set fun milli. And instead of use state, it will be zero. And this is a silly milli. Oh, it's like I set that joke up or something, right? So we set silly string or set silly Millie. And there we can see the Millies are constantly changing. Now, let's say we make this effect dependent upon fun Millie. And we'll set the counter to fun Millie. 
What do you think is going to happen? Aha! They all three changed. Why is that? It looks pretty instantaneous, but actually there is some delay. It is very minimal, obviously, because React is very fast. But what's happening is, as I'm setting the fun milli, the fun milli is being set and is being updated. Fun milli changes. Then I set the counter to fun milli, but now counter changes, so now this effect is triggered, and now this effect is called. So what's happening is, is I am set silly milli, and then everything is changing. What this allows is it allows for a very single responsibility for each effect. So if we were to try and do things inside of component did update, which is the uh, thing we're mimicking here, since component will receive props as being deprecated, we are going to use component will update. And that is what's happening here. So basically we are saying, you know, component, ooh, that is not where I wanted that. We'll say component will update. Right, we don't care about next context that much. So we'll get the next props. We have the next props, the next state. We don't care about next props super much, uh, that much right now. But we care about next state. So we would say, what this is saying is that it's saying if the previous next state, or if my previous state, so if, We'll say const is equal to this dot state. Const counter is equal to this dot state. If counter is not equal to next state dot counter update, right? And that's what we're doing. But we're just doing it, you know, in one array object, which is very, very powerful. So the idea behind hooks is that any effect that you do, any dependency it has, should have that dependency required inside of its array. So that way, each effect is independent of each other, but they can depend upon each other and update as necessary. Now, there will be expectations or uh, exceptions to the rule where sometimes you will have a dependency that you don't want to update. So like if I have an, if I have an effect that will set a list of things I don't want to make that dependent upon that list of things because sometimes I don't want to get, you can get yourself into an infinite loop where it's like I set counter. So if I made set counter dependent upon counter, the issue is, is that you aren't going to get a very good example, but counter is dependent upon set counter and that will render, but it keeps changing, right? So if you were to say set counter plus one or something, you can you could possibly this yeah see you're getting yourself in an infinite loop here because you're calling set counter with counter plus one that's dependent upon counter so it causes this effect again it calls counter plus one it calls the effect counter plus one the effect etc cetera, etc cetera, until the end of time so we are actually going to get rid of that this is not going to be it's going to be silly or a fun milli and we'll make that back into fun milli. Now, that is use effect and that is use state. Those are the two most popular hooks that have come out. Uh, another one is use context. Use context is pretty powerful, but I think has some ex more advanced use cases that I don't really feel like this video will uh, really cater to. But basically, use context will allow you to pass props down without passing them via props. So if I have like three or four functional components, I don't have to pass the top component all or the top prop all the way down. You can use something called uh, use context. Now context currently exists in React, but basically hooks allow it to be a little easier and they kind of standardized in this very specific way on how context works. Now there's another one called um, use dispatch. Uh, dis use dispatch is if you are a Redux fan. Uh, use dispatch is very similar to Redux in that you have a. Uh, we'll play with a use dispatch actually. We'll do use dispatch. I believe it's use dispatch. Hold on, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm sorry. Uh, use reducer. I'm sorry. I keep saying use dispatch. Use reducer. 
So what use reducer is going to do is instead of me having a set counter plus and minus one, you will have a reducer. Again, if you are a um, if you were a React Redux fan, this is this is you. So we'll have state action, and we'll have a switch on the action dot type. We'll do a case on the type, and we'll do increment return, and then we'll have a object that we return. So we're going to have a count. We'll say state dot count plus one. And you guessed it, decrement minus one. Otherwise, we will leave it at that. We will just leave it at that, actually. And then what we'll do from there is we will have a new state and dispatch use reducer. And you have your reducer. Up from up above and then you'll have your initial state as it's very nicely uh, giving to me and our initial state will be counter zero and you can do some uh, powerful things as you saw before with the autocomplete uh, we're not going to get into this but basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to do like f it gives you a function that will allow you to like clear the state or reset the state or whenever it basically it lazy loads the state so that you don't have an initial state but so we now have state and we now have dispatch right so we instead of doing this counter so we'll delete all of our effects from before we'll also delete all of our silly millies and our fun stuff instead of set counter we're just going to do dispatch type increment and we will dispatch a type decrement instead of counter we're going to do state.counter now if we go look at chrome We made a whoopsie. We'll do it live. So let's go into this switch statement and console.log out action. I'm actually not super familiar with this, to be honest. Oh, not inside the switch. We have a type. Oh, did I spell increment wrong? No. Oh, I said counter, not counter, count. It's not state.counter, it's state.count. But I made my initial state counter, so I will say count. Now, there we go. Hey, look at that. Only one mess up. Not bad, not bad. You guys should see my other videos where it takes me like an hour to edit them. This is not going to be edited at all, so good luck, guys. So that is the three simplest hooks that we've got. But they're not just simple. They're very powerful. And they allow us to never again have to choose between a class-based component with a state and a function-based component without a state. So now that that choice can be ubiquitous across your entire application. So now you can strictly enforce to say we no longer allow class-based components. We only allow function-based components, which is very React to me, right? That feels very React. -y. React is very functional. Uh, it really likes the peer functions. So now you have these functions that allow you to have a current state in them which is very, very powerful. And again, you have the access to the lifecycle methods because of, um, because of use effect. So use state and use reducer are very similar. They solve your problem in different ways. Use reducer is probably a little more unit testable because you have a reducer that is testable and then you can actually expect what your outcomes are. 
And U State isn't really as unit testable because U State does a lot of a uh, a magic in the middle where it's you as long as you call the setter and the getter, you know that they work. Uh, it you know it, it's a little less unit testable. Um, I'm a fan of U State just for the simplicity, but there are a bunch of good uh, arguments for use reducer. Now, some people have been saying, well, what um, what is something that really, why? What does this do for you? Well, what this really does for you is that, number one, it allows you to just only write functional components. This functional component is 14 lines and does exactly what this does, right? Uh, minus the component will update and the component did mount. But it does exactly what this does, which is probably, what, around 50 lines? Let's see. Around 50 lines. So it takes you about half the lines, you know? It takes you half to a third of the lines. Um, it's just one of those things where having these functional components makes it super powerful. And now there's also the concept of, and I'm not going to get into it in this video, and I might do it in a, another video, but you have something called uh, custom hooks. So you can write a hook outside of a component that is completely reusable. So I could have a function that will allow me to use state in it from a basically a different part of my code base. So that way I can completely reuse a lot of logic I've already created. If uh, you guys have been writing a lot of React, you know that there's some boilerplate and there's some code duplication just to do with how state works. And that is no longer the case because custom, com, uh, custom hooks will allow you to use those outside of that. So again, I'm going to get into that a little deeper, hopefully in another video. If not, you know, you can look it up on your own. You guys are really smart people. Or feel free to ask in the comments. I will be more than happy to give you guys like a GitHub gist or whatever. So again, this is Hooks. I'm Taylor. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace. Out. Up. Hey, down, down. Something like that.